In the middle of the night, a man flees from pursuers, heading towards a hole in the middle of a field. A terror in the cosmos, between heaven and earth. The frightened fugitive carries an immobile person. To separate the known from the unknown. He drops the person into the cosmic rift and realizes that the pursuers have caught up with him. The world has been waiting for something like this. Three days before the night run through the fields, a man named Royal Abbott wakes up in the morning on his ranch. His wife Cecilia had a dream of their family living peacefully and prosperously. We all cried with joy. I didn't want to wake up. It seems that reality pleases the woman less than the dream. Royal saddles his horse and rides into the field to inspect his cows. Something troubles Royal and makes him nervous, but the man doesn't yet realize the surprises that await him on his field. Meanwhile, life is bustling on the Abbott Ranch. Cecilia is preparing breakfast for the family. Around the table, their sons, Perry and Red, and their granddaughter Amy have gathered. You doing? Good Look. What? Oh, Uncle Red smells like a distillery. Puzzled, Royal returns home. While he was away, two hours had passed more than indicated by his watch. Royal doesn't pay it much attention, but from this moment, the strangeness only begins. Do you have days when time goes by too quickly? Write in the comments below. The Abbott family goes to church, where everyone prays except for Royal. He sits apart from everyone and reads the newspaper. After the service, Amy gives Royal her drawing. They made us paint what we thought heaven looked like. The girl drew the whole family, including her mother, Rebecca. The woman disappeared nine months ago, but the family hopes for her return. In the evening, the family goes to a rodeo where Rhett participates. His bull turns out to be too unruly, and he quickly gets eliminated from the competition amid the mockery of the audience. But the family still supports Rhett. No, you did fine. That bull hasn't rode well in forever. Hey, you'll hit it next time. Late in the evening, the Abbots return home. Cecilia tells Amy the story of how she met Royal. When Royal was nine years old, he wandered onto Cecilia's family ranch. The boy had no memory of his past, but they accepted him into the family, and later he and Cecilia got married. I feel like I was waiting for him my whole life. Do you believe in love at first sight? Write in the comments. Meanwhile, Royal watches the birds and notices that they are behaving too anxiously. Wayne Tillerson, Royal's neighbor, also senses something unusual and even calls the abbots with a warning. Something is coming. Something is happening. Cecilia thinks Wayne has simply gone crazy. In the morning, Royal and Perry count the cattle and realize that two cows have escaped. Now the abbots need to check the fence around the entire ranch. While they are preparing to leave, a wanderer with a backpack enters the yard. The girl's name is Udham a poet from the city who has come to live in a tent in nature and seek enlightenment. Royal allows Udham to stay in his field for a while. Then the men head to the fence. Wayne Tillerson's sons approach them from the other side. They deliver unpleasant news to the abbots. The date says you're nearly a mile over our property line. You have 30 days to move your fences off our land. If the abbots don't comply, they'll have to beg for a fine. As the Tillerson's paperwork is signed by official authorities, Royal senses some trickery, but he doesn't yet understand why Wayne wants his land. The neighbor is either plotting something or losing his mind. Meanwhile, the abbots disperse along the fence. Through binoculars, Royal notices that one field looks weird and dries there. What he sees shocks him. Right in the middle of the field, there is a huge round pit of unknown origin. Royal can't wrap his head around this phenomenon. He throws a pebble into the pit, but it doesn't hit the bottom. It dissolves into strange dust. Curious, Royal puts his hand into the pit. Immediately, he finds himself in his own home where Cecilia is receiving guests. Then Royal pulls his hand out of the pit and is back in the middle of the field. Dark spots appear on his hand, which quickly fade away. He still doesn't understand what it means and heads home. At home, Royal's vision becomes reality. Cecilia is indeed receiving the guest, Sheriff Joy. Royal is amazed at how accurately his prediction came true. Say hello. Hi, Joy. Joy informs Perry, the husband of the missing Rebecca, that the FBI has stopped searching for her. Perry is incredibly outraged by this news but doesn't fall into despair because he needs to take care of their daughter. Little Amy is unaware that the search for her mother has been called off and continues to believe in the best, but could Rebecca have fallen into the pit in the middle of the field? In the morning, Royal drives to the mysterious pit 
which he hasn't told anyone about, and tries to fill it with soil, but it's futile. The pit seems bottomless and even swallows the shovel. Then Royal tries to cover it with a tar, but the pit won't allow it. Frustrated, he throws a land transfer document to the Tillersons into the pit. What the fuck? Fuck! Right next to the pit, a wounded Bisson appears with arrows in its side. Royal no longer understands anything. He follows the animal and arrives at Otham's tent. Meanwhile, the Bisson disappears somewhere. Royal asks the girl not to wander far from the tent. Otham smiles sweetly and asks Royal to sell her the ranch. She is willing to pay a huge sum for it. She'd also ask if Royal has any secrets. The man remains silent in response. It doesn't seem like he's ready to sell the ranch or share his secrets. In the evening, Perry and Rhett go to a bar and get drunk there. Rhett notices his first love, Maria with one of the Tillerson brothers. It infuriates him. Then Rhett shifts gears and tells his brother to move on and stop thinking about Rebecca. It's too painful of a subject for Perry. I think I'm at the end of my rope. Perry goes outside to get some fresh air and encounters Trevor Tillerson, the same person. An unpleasant moment arises between the two and a fight almost breaks out. Meanwhile, inside the bar, Maria joins Rhett. It turns out they still get along well. Suddenly, Rhett notices a brewing fight outside. He defends the intoxicated Perry and attacks Trevor Tillerson. Rhett reen in the troublemaker to the point that his belt buckle even comes off. Then Rhett returns to the bar, but Trevor can't calm down and starts talking trash about Rebecca in front of a drunken Perry. Perry loses control and accidentally takes Trevor's life in a fit of aggression. Rhett immediately drives up to Perry in a car. The brothers are in a state of shock as they drive along the highway. Perry, I need you to tell me what you want me to do. Perry stares blankly and doesn't know what to do. He hadn't planned on taking matters into his own hands with Trevor. But just to be safe, the brothers take Trevor's lifeless body with them. Suddenly, a wounded bison with arrows in its side blocks their path. Apparently, the animal always appears where something mystical is happening. Finally, the Abbott brothers arrive home and hide in the stable. Royal sees this and approaches his sons. The head of the family realizes that if Perry confesses to the crime, little Amy will be left without parents. Royal wants to solve the problem himself. He takes the soiled clothes from his sons and sends Perry, who is suffering, to sleep. Now Royal and Rhett need to clean the car and hide Trevor. Just wait in the stables till I get back, got it? When I come back, we'll never say another word about it. Meanwhile, the remaining Tillerson brothers find Trevor's belt buckle and decide to look for him. Their first stop is the Abbott Ranch. Perry opens the door and tries to remain calm. The Tillersons persistently inquire about Rhett's whereabouts, suspecting him of the crime, although they have no evidence. Perry signals with light into the stable and tries to buy time. The Tillersons notice the scratches on Perry's hand and ask him to come outside. Here, they spot tire tracks leading to the stable. I go back to the house and get the keys for the other side. No. The Tillersons sense trouble and break down the door. There's no one inside the stable. Royal secretly takes Trevor on horseback into the field. The Tillersons notice the horse manure and realize they need to search for a rider on horseback, so they head to the fields. Meanwhile, Royal dismounts the horse and carries Trevor in his arms. Along the way, the man's shirt gets caught on barbed wire and hangs on the fence. Royal quickly reaches the pit and throws Trevor in. He slowly falls down, and Royal hopes that all the problems are behind him. But suddenly, a bright light shines behind him. Adam has arrived with a flashlight. You must know something. Why else would you throw a body in there? It seems that Adam understands the situation better than anyone else. She speaks about the god Kronos, who with his scythe separates one world from another. Perhaps the hole in the field is a portal to another time. Adam promises not to tell anyone about the hole. Then she embraces Royal and suddenly pushes him into the pit. The girl herself is frightened by what she has done. She runs away from the pit, taking off Royal's shirt from the barbed wire. The Tillersons don't find anyone in the fields and return to the Abbot's house. Cecilia meets them at the door, quickly calming the boys down and even making them apologize for the commotion. The Tillersons leave, and Cecilia goes to the kitchen to sort out her family's problems. All right, where's your father? Royal regains consciousness in the middle of the field. A bison with arrows in its side grazes nearby. The man finds his horse and rides home. The family has been waiting for him all night in the kitchen. Without going into details, Royal states that Trevor is taken care of. They need to get back to work as if nothing happened. During the anxious family meeting, the decision is made to drive Utham off their land and make sure she doesn't see anything. They'd also notice a wound on Royal's leg as if he was shot. Cecilia tends to the wound, 
but Royal doesn't reveal how he got into a shootout. He himself hasn't fully grasped what happened to him that night. Sheriff Joy arrives in response to the Tillerson's call. The brothers show her Trevor's belt buckle. What do you want me to do with this? Investigate. Look, there's blood right there. To motivate Joy to investigate, the Tillersons promise her their support in the sheriff election. The woman promises to help. Meanwhile, Rhett visits Maria at work and invites her to lunch. Sitting in a diner, the young people talk about life and hope to rekindle their relationship. Rhett also asks the girl not to tell anyone about this fight with Trevor. Maria agrees to keep it a secret. Royal and Perry go to the lawyer to sort out their land rights. On the way, Royal tries to uplift his son, so he won't be saddened by Trevor. But Perry is struggling to cope with the shock. The Abbott's lawyer advises them to simply give a piece of land to the Tillersons. The old maps are incomprehensible, and it's clear that the Tillersons have bribed the judge. But Royal isn't satisfied with the option of simply surrendering. He knows that Wayne Tillerson is too cunning, and they shouldn't play into his hands. You don't cozy up to the Tillersons. You keep them as far away as possible. Royal goes home to Wayne to have an open conversation with him. On Wayne's table, he finds a business card of an agronomist who studies the land for rare elements. This raises suspicions in Royal, and he takes the business card. He then goes into Wayne's room and asks for explanations about the land. Wayne confuses Royal with his words. It seems like a conqueror's instinct has awakened in him. I want your west pasture because I want your west pasture. Royal offers Wayne another piece of land, but Wayne insists on the western pastures, and it is precisely there where the mysterious hole was located. Royal senses that something is amiss and is not willing to give up. Otham wanders around the abbot's property and notices a strange symbol on a rock. She has unconsciously been drawing this symbol in her notebooks, but doesn't understand its meaning. Otham encounters Amy near the rock. The little girl explains that the unusual symbol is the abbot family's brand. Emmy also tells Otham that Royal is alive and returned home this morning. Otham instantly feels relieved because she was worried about Royal, whom she pushed into the hole. She doesn't understand why she did it herself. Meanwhile, Royal arrives at Otham's tent and retrieves his shirt. Then he goes to the hole and throws the shirt into the misty unknown, covering up all traces of the crime. At home before dinner, Royal is lost in thought. The multitude of mysteries troubles him. He blames God for all the troubles. Then Royal bursts out and insists that the cows be moved to another part of the pasture far away from the dreadful hole. There is a great void! The next day, without questioning, all the abbots drive the cattle far away from the hole. Suddenly, Royal sees a calf breaking away from the herd and running towards the hole. He barely manages to save the animal. In the evening, Royal goes to the barn and retrieves an old photograph hidden from everyone. Otham also arrives at the barn. There is definitely a strange connection between her and Royal, as if they knew each other before. They both don't remember their childhood before the age of nine, but believe they can find answers by helping each other. Something's happening here. Something bigger than you and me. And we're the only two people that know about it. To start, Otham asks Royal to tell her what he saw when he fell into the hole. He was falling slowly and then woke up in a field under bright spotlighting. Oil derricks were everywhere, and there was no place to escape. A large crowd of locals had gathered in the field, all dressed in work uniforms. They looked at him with confusion and fear, avoiding speaking to him. Only Cecilia approached him. She said that it was no longer their land and that Royal had been gone for two years. Then she did something weird. Run. Tillerson immediately pulled out a gun and shot Royal in the leg. The rest were also ready to shoot, but Royal quickly jumped back into the hole. And what do you think? Is the hole in the middle of the field a portal to the future? Share your opinion in the comments. We'll feature the best ones in the next video. And here is the best comment from the previous one. See you in the next videos.